Hello everyone, let's talk about this integral here. By just looking at the integral, it looks like a complicated integral here, but then um, I will still say this one is a basic integral here because it doesn't re really require any special techniques to integrate, like integration by parts or substitution or tricks up or anything. But then now, then you may say, how do we, how do we um, integrate this? The first step usually is to simplify it if we are seeing a complicated expression. So one thing that we can do is that we can look at the denominator and see what actually is happening here. Do you realize that one minus sine square X is actually just cosine square based on the, that's from the Pythagorean identity, right? So we can actually just try to turn it into cosine square X and see what's going on. Okay, so first, we'll just write it as sine x. Okay, so we do not touch the numerator at this point, and actually there is nothing we can do about it, right? And then what do we have in the denominator? We have um, cosine square. Okay, so we turn that into cosine square x and then dx. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you cannot recall the one minus sine square x, I will just show you right here. So let's just recall that sine square x plus cosine square x is equal to one. So now cosine square x, if I subtract sine square x from both sides, I get cosine square x. equals one minus sine square x. So that means we can replace this one minus sine square x by cosine square x. So now we have this. And then you may say, what do we do? What do we, how do we continue from here? Now, what we can do is that we can think about breaking the cosine up as cosine times cosine. And then you may say, why do we do that? Um, it's really because when you break that up, you probably can turn it into some other functions. So let's say we have cosine x right here and then times cosine x right here. You agreed that cosine square x is equal to cosine x times cosine x, right? And so we have that. <clears throat> then you may say, what, what do we do right now? How do we continue? How do we continue? Um, let's try to break down the function even further. Okay, so I can break that as sine x over cosine x. And then, so as you can see here, we are actually getting tangent and then times one over cosine x. And so as you can see here, I we write the whole fraction as a product of two fractions. Sine x times one give, gives us the sine x, and then cosine x times cosine x gives us the cosine x times cosine x, or the cosine x squared, right? I mean, cosine square x. So in this case, we can turn the sine x over cosine x into tangent. And then the reciprocal of cosine x, one over cosine x is being turned into the secant. So let's do that. So that's tangent x. And then the other one is secant x, dx. But do you recognize this tangent x, secant x? Let's just recall something else. We know that the derivative of secant x is equal to secant x tangent x. And so now the question is, what is the antiderivative of tangent x secant x? That will be secant x. Yeah, so that's it's actually that simple. So the answer will just be secant x. I'm just using this color. And then plus the constant integration. Okay, so that's it for this one. So as you can see here, the calculus portion, 
of this problem is not even that difficult. It's really just this step right here, as you can see. Um, the rest of the stuff is really just algebraic manipulation. So sometimes when we run into an integral that looks complicated, sometimes it's still a basic integral. Um, all we need to do is to think about how to simplify that expression that's given to us. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. And then also please check out my other math videos. And then well, thank you for watching this video. I will see you next.